This is our daily top 5 gainers and top 5 losers analysis for August 2, 2019. My name is JC De Guzman and we're going to talk about my technical analysis for 10 different stocks. I'll give you my overall sentiment followed by my recommendations. So I'd like to mention as well in advance that if any of these 10 stocks begin at a price lower or higher than the dominant range that you are about to see, make sure that you post a request for the stock's latest trade and volume distribution and true market sentiment charts in our private client's forum. But of course, you, you will only have to do that if you are interested to trade those names or those, those stocks. So, and uh, finally, I'd like to mention also that uh, if you are about to enter a new position in any of these uh, 10 stocks, there's an extra process that you must go through, and that is the calculation of your reward to risk ratio. Do a test buy only when you are satisfied with your reward to risk ratio. And of course, when our buy signals are confirmed. So let's begin with the first stock in our list. We got FEN. FEN closed on Friday at 2.42. Support is at 2.2. Resistance is at 2.8. The 10 SMACD combo remains invalid because uh, the last candlestick is still moving below the 10 SMA and MACD is still moving below the signal line. RSI is in the neutral territory. The risk level of FEN is based on the historical volatility. It is still, uh, it's already high. Okay. Now let's take a look at the trade and volume distribution chart to verify if the dominant range is closer to the intraday high than the intraday low. So the, fir the first dominant range is between 2.4 to 2.42. If FEN starts at a price lower than 2.4, I suggest that you monitor it between 2.25 to 2.32. But with this, since the first dominant range is closer to the intraday high than the intraday low, the momentum power indicator is bullish. The true market sentiment of uh, FEN is neutral on the other hand. So anyhow, my overall sentiment for FEN remains bullish. But be mindful that FEN has been moving in the sideways pattern since uh, the second week of July, or June rather, between 2.2 to 2.8. Okay, now it's up to you now if you would like to trade the name. But like what I've mentioned, I'm still bullish on FEN given, given the, the price action in the past few months. Now if you have... FEN because it's still trading above your trading stop loss. I would suggest that you can still top up on your position since the momentum power indicator is bullish but only oblige to that recommendation if you consider yourself as an experienced and, and disciplined trader. Otherwise, you are better off waiting for the 10 SMACD combo to be revalidated provided that the momentum power indicator is still bullish by then. If you are if you would like to enter a new position on FEN, make sure that you calculate your reward to risk ratio first. If you are satisfied with your triple R, then you can go ahead and do a test buy provided. Again, if you consider yourself as an experienced and a disciplined trader simply because the 10 SMACD combo is still not valid even though the momentum power indicator is already bullish. Okay, next is PX. PX closed on Friday at 3.9. It managed to break above its resistance, the previous resistance, at 3.86, which is now acting as its immediate support. Its immediate resistance is now pegged near 4.4. 4. 4. Even though the 10 SMACD combo is still not yet formally valid, I am already seeing a formation of a bullish convergence between the, between the MACD and the signal line. RSI is still quite distant from the classical overbought level. The risk level of PX is already moderate, but it's about to enter the high risk level. The upward momentum is not yet very strong, but it's just about three points. The, the ADX is about three points away from entering that category. Perhaps that will happen once the price breaks above 4.0. The trade and volume distribution chart of PX shows that the, the momentum power indicator is bullish. The first dominant range is between 3.9 to 3.91. If PX 
starts at a price lower than 3.9, I suggest that you monitor the next dominant range between 3.8 to 3.84. The true market sentiment of uh, PX is... Okay, it's still new. It's neutral. Okay, a while back, I think I talked about the. Uh, a while back, let me correct the true market sentiment of Fen. It was bearish, not not neutral. This neutral one is for the true market sentiment of PX last Friday. Okay. Now my overall sentiment for PX is bullish, despite the neutral true market sentiment. It's bullish because the tennis MACD combo is a. Uh, poised to be revalidated and the momentum power indicator is already bullish so that's why my overall sentiment is bullish for px if you still have px because it's still trading above your tra trailing stop loss you have some data driven signals to to top up within the dominant range if you are planning to enter a new position i think you will get uh, an attractive reward to risk ratio because the last candlestick is a closer to its immediate support than the resistance level so you can go ahead also and do a test buy within the dominant range so next is pepsi pip closed on friday at 1.88 support is at 1.55 resistance is at 1.95 take note that the last candlestick is already closer to the resistance level than the support the tense MACD combo is uh, poised to be revalidated. MACD is uh, about to cross above the signal line. RSI is still uh, relatively distant from the classical overbought level. I think RSI will touch the classical overbought level once the price breaks above uh, 1.95 to 2 pesos per share. The risk level of PIP is uh, moderate. And the upward momentum is about two points away from getting that confirmed strong upward momentum label or category. And that's when the price breaks above 1.95, I suppose. The dominant range is between 1.83 to 1.88. And that makes the momentum power indicator bullish. The true market sentiment of uh, PIP is bullish as well. My overall sentiment for PIP is bullish. If you already have it and it's still trading above your trading stop loss, you can go ahead and uh, top up add more shares within the dominant range. Just make sure that you pay close attention to your trading stop loss, especially when the price touches the resistance at 1.95. If you are planning to enter a new position, do not forget what I said during the introduction about your triple R reward to risk ratio if you are satisfied with your triple r you can go ahead and do a test bias also within the dominant range next is ppg ppg closed on friday at 6.04 it managed to respect the support at 5.46 after several attempts of trying to break below that level resistance is at 7.2 uh, the tense MACD combo is still invalid despite the green candlestick last Friday. RSI is in the neutral level. The risk level of PPG is extremely high. Take note, it's extremely high. Although the uh, upward momentum is still in a, in the very strong cat in a very strong category, uh, I, I am already seeing uh, a sideways uh, movement on the price action of PPG since the last week of July. Okay, now let's take a look at the trade and volume distribution. The dominant range is between 6 to 6.04. This makes the momentum power indicator bullish. The true market sentiment of PPG is bearish on the other hand. My overall sentiment for PPG considering what happened in the past few months is still bullish however if you are still holding onto your ppg and you are thinking of adding more shares i suggest that you just hold your position if it's still trading above your tra trailing stop loss do not top up yet do not top up yet consider the idea of topping up once the price breaks above 6.10 with a volume that is at least 
higher than the 50% of the stock's 10-day volume average. Same advice for those who are planning to enter a new position with an extra calculation of your reward to risk ratio, of course. Okay? So after PPG, we got MA. MA closed on Friday at 0 0.01. Support is at 0 0.009. Resistance is at 0 0.011. The tennis MACD combo is still a, it's very valid. However, RSI is already in the classical overbought level. The, the, the risk level of MA is extremely high. Take note of that again. Now let's take a look at the trade and volume distribution. The dominant range last Friday was between 0 0.0098 all the way to 0 0.01. This makes the momentum power indicator bullish as well. The true market sentiment for MA is neutral. So here's my personal uh, sentiment on MA. I, I don't like trading stocks with historical problems when it comes to daily volume. MA is one of those stocks. So consider that when you do a, a trading decision, a trade decision for MA, yes, the tennis MACD combo is valid. Yes, the momentum power indicator is bullish. But consider also the, the historical behavior of MA. It has, uh, it has historical problems when it comes to daily volume, some liquidity concerns. Okay? So anyhow, if you would like to stick with the process based on the technicals, it's still okay. It's still okay to do a test buy within the dominant range. Of course, if you're satisfied with your reward to risk ratio, since our buy signals are present. If you still have MA, if you managed to enter a new position last Thursday, you can still uh, technically consider the idea of topping up within the dominant range as well. But for both of you, I suggest that you pay close attention to your trailing stop loss, especially now that RSI is playing in the classical overbought level. Okay, take note of that. So we're done with the top five gainers. Well, let's now move on to the top five losers, beginning with ICT. ICT closed on Friday at 129.7. Support is at 120.2. Resistance is at 148. The tense MACD combo is already invalid. It's still invalid. And as soon as we're talking about the top five losers, we don't have to check the status of the momentum power indicator because it's automatically bearish due to the red candlestick. Redness of the last candlestick to be precise. RSI is still downward sloping, pointing toward the classical oversold level. The risk level of ICT being, being an index company is still low. The downward momentum is still very strong as confirmed by the ADX score and with the negative DMI hovering the positive DMI. The dominant range of ICT is between 129.6 all the way to 130.6. The true market sentiment for ICT last Friday was uh, neutral. So we don't see signs that the foreign investors or the institutional investors or brokers are heavily interested in buying the dips. No, I'm not seeing that sign yet. I don't see signs of that yet. So if, we, if you don't have ICT, don't buy it just yet. Let's continue monitoring the stock. Add it into your watch list, but don't buy it yet. We would rather consider the idea of doing a test buy once it pulls back closer to the support level at 120.2. But for now, my overall sentiment is bearish on ICT. If you still have ICT for short-term trading, which is hard to believe because your trailing stop loss should have already been hit uh, one or two weeks ago, since it touched the resistance at 148, well, you have to respect your trading stop loss. Okay? Now, let's move on to Alco. Alco closed today, last Friday, at 0 0.98. Support is at 0 
resistance is at 1.03. It broke below the previous support at 1.03 last Thursday, which is now acting as its immediate resistance. The 10 SMACD combo is already invalid. It's it has been it has it has been invalid since July 19. Okay. The RSI of Alco is uh, in the neutral level, but it continues to point towards toward the southward direction. It's downward sloping. The risk level of Alco is high already. Now, the dominant range is between 0 0.98 to 1.02. This is still closer to the intraday low than the intraday high due to the size of volume and the number of trades registered between 0 0.98 to 1 peso, 1 peso per share. The true market sentiment of Alco is bearish. That supports my overall sentiment of bearish. That supports my bearish overall sentiment for Alco. So... Respect your trailing stop loss if you still have it. If you don't have Alco, don't do a test buy yet. There are no buy signals yet. Next, we got CNPF. It closed last Friday at 14.42. At it's now at the brink of breaking below the support level at 14.3. Resistance is at 15.5. The 10 smack D combo is already invalid. invalid. It got invalidated last Friday. RSI continues its, continues its downward sloping movement. The risk level of CNPF is a low and uh, the negative DMI is already moving above the positive DMI. So the, there is a, the downward momentum is strengthening although it's not yet inside the very strong category. So the dominant range last Friday was between 14.42 to 14.54. The true market sentiment for CNPF is bearish as well. That again supports my bearish overall sentiment for CNPF. If you have it, respect your trading stop loss. Although I doubt it that, you, that some of you still have it. If you if you followed our system or our our methodologies, so if you don't have CNPF, don't rush. Don't enter a new position. There are no buy signals yet. Next, we got uh, FGEN. FGEN closed last Friday at 26.15. It's at the brink also of breaking below the support level at 26.10. For the resistance, we can consider 27.5 as the resistance level. Okay, If it breaks below 26.10, I am looking at 25.4 as the next support level, which is in confluence with the 61.8% retracement of our up Fibonacci. Anyhow, the 10 SMACD combo has been invalid since uh, the second week of July. RSI continues its downward sloping pattern toward the classical oversold level, but at this point, it's still in the neutral territory. FGEN has a low risk level. The dominant range last Friday was between 26.10 to 26.20. Resist for the uh, true market sentiment of FGEN, it's uh, bullish. So apparently, there are some deep packeted investors who bought the dips at 26 point, at near, the, near the support level at 26.15. But for retail traders like most of us, I suggest that uh, you only entertain the idea of doing a test buy especially if you are a beginner when the 10 SMACD combo is valid and when and when the momentum power indicator is bullish if you are an experienced and disciplined trader you can go ahead and entertain the idea of doing a test buy once the momentum power indicator is bullish even if the 10 SMACD combo is not yet valid that's a conditional statement take note of the condition that i've mentioned before preempting our buy signals, okay? So, my overall sentiment for FGEN at this point, considering what has been happening on FGEN since the last week of last week of June 2019, I would say that I am in the neutral uh, sentiment for FGEN. You are all better off waiting for a buy signal if you are to enter a new position. If you have had FGEN, 
uh, for a while already and, and it's still trading above your trailing stop loss, I suggest that you hold your position, don't top up yet until the momentum power indicator becomes bullish. Last, last for today's video is MRC. It closed on Friday at 0 0.32. Support is at 0 0.30. Resistance is at 0 0.37. The tennis MACD combo is invalid. RSI is about to touch the classical oversold level. It's 15 points away from entering that zone. The risk level of MRC is low. The negative DMI is already increasing the gap from the positive DMI. It's about 4 to 5 points away from getting the confirmed very strong downward momentum label or category. So watch out. Watch out for the support of 0 0.30. The trade and volume distribution shows that the, this, this is actually not a dominant range but a dominant price point at 0 0.32. It's in the middle. So for me, this is neutral. Okay, But nonetheless, the momentum power indicator is bearish. That's automatic when we are talking about the top five losers. The true market sentiment of MRC is bearish. That's again That again supports my bearish overall sentiment for MRC. Wait for the tennis MACD combo to be revalidated and for the momentum power indicator to become bearish or to become bullish rather. I stand corrected. So I am bearish on MRC at this point. Okay, so there you go. You've heard my technical analysis for these 10 stocks. So we're done with the evergreen strategy in trading the Philippine stock market seminar in Iloilo last uh, Saturday. Uh, this coming Saturday, August, August 10, I'll be in Cavite, Dasmariñas Cavite, to, to talk about the six lessons uh, in our evergreen strategy in trading the Philippine stock market. So if you are from Cavite and you are subscribed for one year, I highly recommend that you enter or that you attend that seminar. Most of the attendees in Iloilo last Saturday are one-year subscribers of Equities Analytics and they said that they understood the concepts, the methodologies all the more when they attended the seminar and heard me explain everything in person and got their answers, got their questions answered as well. So I highly recommend that you attend the seminar if you're anywhere near Desmarinas Cavite this coming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Anyhow, you are entitled to a 50% discount on your ticket. So if you have not bought your ticket yet, go ahead to our website at equilis.com and then click on seminars and then you click on um, the link for the Cavite schedule. This one right here. Okay, Cavite. The Evergreen Strategy in Trading the Philippine Stock Market Seminar in Cavite. Okay, so I'll see you this coming Saturday in the Marinas. Again, my name is JC de Guzman. Have a great weekend and a profitable and disciplined trading day, disciplined trading week ahead. Bye for now.